Uh, good morning. I would like us to uh, think about our theme for the month of June, Hope for Service. So it's time for summer activities. And our emphasis this uh, month is serving God. So hope for service is a very important uh, thought that we need to emphasize this month. And so may I request you to plan stand please as we read the book of Joshua, chapter 15 in the Old Testament, Joshua 15, 13 to 19. This is a verse that talks about uh, Caleb, one of the people who served the Lord together with Joshua. So we will read together Joshua 15, 13 to 19. And uh, you can say the words as you read in your Bible while I am also reading here in the New King James. Begin. Now Caleb, the son of Jephoni, he gave a shire among the children of Judah, according to the commandment of the Lord Joshua, namely Kirjath Arba, which is Hebron, and the father of Anak. Caleb drove out the three sons of Anak from there, Sheshai, Ahiman, and Talmai, the children of Anak. Then he went up firm there to the inhabitants of uh, Deliri. Formerly the name was uh, Deber, was Kirjath Seper. And Caleb said, He who attacks Kirjath Seper takes it. To him I will give Aksa, my daughter, as wife. So Othiel, the son of Kenza, brother of Caleb, took it, and he gave him Aksa, his daughter, as wife. Now, it was when she came to him that she persuaded him to ask her father for a field. So she dismantled for her donkey and Caleb and said to her, What do you want to wish? She answered, Give me a blessing. Since you have given me land in the south, give me also the spring of water. So he gave her the upper springs and the lower springs. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, thank you. It's so fascinating to study your word about people of God who in the midst of great need and uh, challenges serve you and fulfill your will. In the same way, Lord, in our time today, we have uh, challenges like uh, uh, Joshua and Caleb faced. They are spiritual giants that oppose the work of the Lord. And so by your grace, Lord, help us to uh, counter them and uh, follow your perfect will. Speak to us and meet our needs for today and bless this whole day, the first Sunday of the month of June. In Jesus' name, amen. Please be seated. So as I said, our month of June centers on the theme hope for service. So it's summertime, though in the Philippines is already the beginning of the rainy season. But May, June, July is still summer in many parts of the world. And uh, it's time to work. And, uh, many years ago, one of our presidents, I think uh, it was President Ramos who changed the summer to June from April to June, but now, but it, they returned it to April. But now at this time, we are returning again that to the uh, previous uh, action of government that we will have summer, May, June, July. And uh, so that's why many of our activities, including VBS and other church activities will be continuing, will be held this June and July. And I hope that the Lord, by His grace, will be able to, to do all that. So in connection with our month of service this June, I have entitled my message, Facing Spiritual Giants with Hope. 
So uh, we have uh, our bulletin there, and maybe you could pick a copy of our bulletin. And uh, so this is uh, the title of our message, Conquering Spiritual Giants with Hope. So today, uh, we have many activities to face, especially with uh, uh, the leadership of Pastor Long. And so it's very, very uh, hard to face all these important challenges. And we need to cooperate with him and work with him and help him in whatever way we can. And so in our bulletin uh, this morning, uh, we have this... Uh, uh, message here. Uh, two things I would like to take up with you. Uh, spiritual service is supreme. And second, um, serving, serve him faithfully. So these are very important uh, uh, things that the Lord wants us to do. And uh, as we start our message, I would like you to first to open to Psalm uh, 100. This is one of the psalms we used to read when we start our worship service here in church. And uh, may I read it to you. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all you land. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pastures. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endures to all generations. Now here is a very familiar verse to start our services. And this is talking about uh, the service of worship. Now, aside from Psalm 100, we also read other psalms or any portion of the scripture to uh, prepare us for worship every Sunday. And uh, here, uh, the writer is uh, not written who, but uh, uh, he is telling us about the service of worship. So before we serve the Lord in Sunday school or Bible study or soul winning, there is one important service that we have to start first. And it is obvious here. The first service of the Lord is worship. So before we worship Him, and before we serve Him in doing activities in church, we have to serve Him first with worship. So is worship service? Yes, it is not only singing in the choir or leading in the worship service or teaching Sunday school. That is service. All service must start with worship to give glory to the Lord before we fulfill what he wants us to do. So here it is in Psalm 100. It tells when we worship the Lord, part of our service, we have to enter with thanksgiving. So when we enter a church building or any other church, we have to thank him. And then, with gladness. So have, been, have you been sad last week or yesterday or last, last night? Many sad things came to your heart. And uh, did it uh, disturb your peace? The Lord said, you come with gladness. Yesterday, we attended the funeral service for Mrs. Genesta in Iloilo City. But uh, we came with gladness because uh, the people who came rejoiced in the memory of her life that was very faithful in serving the Lord. So we come with thanksgiving, with gladness, with singing. That's why when we started this worship, we sang. And we have many other sing songs that we sing during worship service every Sunday, every month with different emphasis, and then with praise. 
So all these are different kinds of uh, praising the Lord, thanksgiving, gladness, singing, praise. Different nuances of uh, praising the Lord. So we read, know that he is God and no one else. He is our creator. He created me. He created you. So each one of us who God created are unique. How we wish we are created very handsome people or very beautiful women. But no, get different, dif uh, created us differently. We are Filipinos. And no matter how we try to improve ourselves, we will always be Filipinos. We are not Europeans. We are not Americans. We are not uh, Chinese. We are Filipinos. So he created us. And each one of us is very special. And we have to recognize and praise him for that. We are his people because we accepted Jesus Christ as our personal savior. Naturally, every man who is born in the world is the people of Satan because we are all sinners. So we are naturally people of Satan. But when we accepted Jesus Christ as our savior, we have become people of God. And sheep of his pasture. So that is one of the basic comparisons of the Lord to us, his people. We are like sheep. He did not compare, compare us to a dog. He did not compare us even to a cow. He did not even compare us to uh, a lizard. No, a sheep. And the sheep is a very dumb animal, they say, but also someone that when you teach the sheep, it will follow you. It only likes to follow and follow and follow. That's what the Lord wants us to do, follow him. So are you a lion or are a sheep, a sheep of the Lord Jesus Christ? Are you a tiger? So the Lord wants you to become his sheep. And then come to his presence and uh, he is our God. And what more? Uh, he is our creator. We are his people. We are his sheep. So give thanks as such. And then it continues here. Bless his name. Know we that the Lord uh, enter his gates with thanksgiving and in his courts with place. So bless his name. Does God need blessing? Lord, I bless you. Pwede na. I am a sinner, I am only a human being, but can I bless God? Yes, because the Bible is always full of verses where people of God bless him. Even if we are human beings and we are sinners, after we have been washed by the blood of Jesus Christ, our lips now become holy and godly, so we can bless him. So when we bless him, can we add anything to his blessedness? Of course not, but he is pleased when uh, we bless him. In the same way that when you are a parent and then you have a child, and then when your child, your baby grows up and then starts speaking, and then what, this, uh, what does this baby say to you is he will say, Daddy, and he will see, say, Mommy. Now, what do you feel when you are a parent with your child calling you Daddy and Mommy and embracing you? and uh, kissing you. So you feel so happy, just like God. Though he is already blessed and perfect, yet when I say, Lord, I bless you, it adds to his blessing, you know, from that point of view. He is good, his loving kindness is everlasting, and his mercy endures for all generations. So one important characteristic of the Lord he is, loving kindness that means he is full of love a love that is full of kindness you know you can love and yet uh, not full of kindness there are some people who are very loving but they don't behave kindly there they, they don't speak uh, in kind words so parents or loved ones when you speak to someone and you love him you say to him in a way that is loving and tender, because that is what God does to him. Bless his name. He is good. 
He has full of loving kindness and mercy. So God is always merciful. So remember, we have been washed by his blood. And with all the things that we ask him, he gives to us because he loves us and he is merciful. Sometimes we don't deserve what we ask, but God is full of mercy. And then at the final verses here, in verse 5, the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endures to all generation. He is true. He never makes a lie. Everything he says is true. And whatever he promised, he will fulfill. So remember that this is the beginning of our spiritual service, accepting that he is a great God and worshiping him. So today, as we start our worship service, before we go to our Sunday school to study the word of God, before we go to our Bible clubs in the afternoon, before the choir sings, we have first to worship God by listening to his word because he speaks beautiful words for us. There's another verse to uh, uh, add to this, Deuteronomy chapter 10, verses uh, 12 and 13. One of the verses here in the writings of Moses, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. So here, Deuteronomy chapter 10, 12, and 13. I read. And now, Israel, what does the Lord your God require of you but to fear the Lord your God, to walk in all his ways, and to love him, to serve the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul. 13. And to keep the commandments of the Lord and his statutes, which I command you today for your good. It was Moses who wrote this. This was given to the Jews to the Old Test in the Old Testament. But now it is also given to Christians of the Church of Jesus Christ. And it's wonderful that we also follow him. It requires us to walk in his ways, love him, serve him uh, with all our hearts and soul, and keep his commands and statutes. So that is a repetition for Psalm 100 that they have given to you. So brethren, the question is, are you giving your spiritual service by giving your worship first? So before you properly worship him, you do it first. Before you go to the Bible class, sing in the choir, teach Sunday school, go soul winning, study your Bible, and teach to others. So that is the, the order that God has given in the Word of God. And now we go to the second, the final, and the practical application of this. Uh, I wrote in the second point, serve Him faithfully. First is spiritual service is supreme. Now, serve him faithfully. This is uh, a very important uh, thought I'm giving you in connection with our title, uh, Conquering Spiritual Giants with Hope. So go to the Old Testament again in Joshua chapter 24. Remember Joshua after Moses died? The man who took over his work was Joshua. You know, many, many years Joshua was always with Moses. It, was, it lasted about 40 years for Joshua to be second in command. But he obeyed the Lord. So can you do that? Can you continue to be assistant to your manager or to your boss for 20 years without complaint? That's what uh, Joshua did. And he, with the time when he took over from Moses, uh, Moses was already 120 years old and the Lord took him. And he called him to Mount Nebo. And then before that, he showed him the, the mountains of the promised land, Israel. 
After that, in Mount Nebo, the Lord took him. Nobody where, nobody knew where Moses was buried by the Lord. But I remember one great preacher. He said, uh, it seems something like this when God made Moses see the promised land, but he could not go there. And the Lord said to, Mo, to uh, Moses, okay, you Moses, you have to go. And this preacher said the Lord embraced Moses. And then he, uh, he died in the arms of the Lord and was married there. And so Joshua started to take over. At 90 years old, Palang nag-start ang leadership. And he only led until he was 110. So that means 20 years of service in conquering the land, in fighting enemies and giants there in the land of promise after Moses passed away. So when Joshua also, when he reached the age of uh, 110, after they were able to conquer the promised land, Joshua himself uh, said uh, to Israel uh, here, and uh, I would like to, to read to you, it says here, Joshua, chapter 24, verse uh, 15 here in the notes. And if it seems evil to you to serve the Lord, choose from yourselves this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which your father served that we are on the other side of the river Jordan, the river or of the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. So remember Joshua, when he said this, he was already 110 years old. They have already conquered the land of Israel that the Lord has given them. Then the, uh, Joshua said to Israel, now I am going. I have finished my responsibility. The Lord is going to take me away. But I challenge you, what will you do now? And Joshua said, you look at me and my family. What will we do? For me and my house, we will serve the Lord. So that was the challenge of Joshua. Historians say that Joshua lived and served the Lord from 1405 BC to 1385 BC. This was the time, 20 years of service for the Lord. And the name of Joshua means Jeho Jehovah saves, beautiful name. So maybe you'll have a grandchild or a son, you want to name him Joshua. Jehovah saves because Jeho Joshua in the Old Testament is no other than Jesus in the New Testament. And Jesus, you know, God saves. So that is a beautiful meaning of the word Joshua. So here are seven things that Joshua did in those 20 years that uh, Moses left him to be the sole leader of Israel. In the outline I wrote here, number one, he gave full service, completo kapagalagan. No turning back, no reserve. He gave everything, even at the age of 90 to 110, he served the Lord faithfully. And then Moses died, and of course, uh, he continued his service. Number two, he became a soldier. Imagine 20 years of conquering the land and uh, great enemies. By and by, I will tell you about the companion of uh, Joshua, Caleb. He fought the giants. So here, uh, Joshua was leading the whole Israel and whatever the nations that were there, including nations of giants, Joshua was a soldier. 
he was a good general. He was uh, like maybe MacArthur, a very brilliant uh, general of World War II, or General Eisenhower, the general who led uh, the Allied forces in Europe, and General MacArthur who led the Allied forces in, in the Orient, including conquering the Japanese here in the Philippines. So, very important, he was a good soldier, just like that. Number three, he was a scout, scouting enemies, or he was a spy. You remember in Numbers 13 and 14, they did not know the land of Canaan. So they sent spies, and one of the spies sent by Moses was Joshua. They have to look at the land, and look at the kind of people. They have to look at their soldiers, their army. They have to look at their cities, at their uh, protection in their cities. How do you, they, they attack them? So he was a scout, a very good spy. And uh, remember when they went back, they brought uh, one big bunch of grapes that only two people could carry. Grabe no? Grapes kay nga nakalako. Ang yang bunga sa brakadaghan, duha pa katao ang naga nagadala ani. I remember today, I have been planting a grape grape plant in my garden until now. Wala gyud po nagbunga, wala gyud po nagbuhak, nagbuwak ang ako uh, grapes. I don't know how to make it bear fruit. But anyway, I'm going back again. In my retirement, one of my projects is how to make that grapes grow and bear fruit. I just always like a challenge like that. Anyway, number four now, Joseph, uh, Joshua, every time Moses went to pray, like in Numbers 27, so Joshua was there praying together with his boss, Moses. So he became a prayer man, prayerful man together with Moses. And then in number five point here, he always upheld the sovereignty of God. God is always on the top of everything. Just like Moses who put God on the top every time he did things. And what a wonderful challenge and uh, uh, thing to copy on the part of uh, Joshua. And then chapter number six here in the outline I wrote here, he walked in the spirit, in the spirit's presence. So everywhere he went, just like Moses, Numbers 27 verse 18, Deuteronomy also 34 verse 6, he was always asking the spirit of the Lord to lead him, just like us today. The Lord, since the time of Moses in the New Testament, is always telling us, be filled with the Spirit. Go in the power of the Spirit, just like the Lord Jesus Christ. So you always walk in the presence of the Spirit. Number six. And uh, number seven. Uh, he separated with Moses. Every time Moses went with him, Moses had to separate from Israel. And they were surrounded by the presence of the Lord with the angel. Uh, with the with the uh, with the cloud of uh, the holiness of God, Moses was there at the front talking with the Lord, and Moses Joshua will always hear behind, just at the tip of the of uh, the cloud of glory, always joining and listening to what Moses did. And so Joseph uh, Joshua was a great man of God, very very obedient servant of the Lord. And uh, uh, number eight point here, I wrote, uh, he was selfless in following the Lord completely to the very end. So we were reading just a while ago, uh, Joshua chapter 24 and verse 15. What did he say to the whole of Israel? For me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And so he was telling Israel, oh, you follow me. You follow Moses, and follow me as I followed Moses. We will follow the Lord. So this is our point number two. 
serve him faithfully. And uh, now the second person and the last person we would like to take up. We just uh, go back a little bit to uh, uh, Joshua chapter chapter uh, 15 here. We read it a while ago, the text. It's starting with verse 13, Joshua 13, 15. Uh, there was another companion of Joshua who stood with him when they were just buying the land, who, were, who said, the land is full of giants, but let's go and attack them. We are able to conquer them together with Joshua. And so here, Caleb, Caleb he was very, very old. He was uh, uh, also himself uh, at this time, I think uh, almost 100 years old. And so they f went and faced, uh, and they said, Caleb went to Joshua, son of Caleb, son of Jephoni, he said to Joshua, I want to go. And then he saw that mountain there in the land assigned for the tribe of, Ju of Judah. And he said, uh, I want to go, uh, General Joshua, I want to, you to give me Kiriath Arba. Kiriath Arba, uh, later on, uh, is no longer with that name because it is uh, Hebron. So today, if you go to Israel for a tour, you go to the city of Hebron. It was the ancient Kiriath Arba that Joshua chapter 15 was talking about. It was the mountain that Caleb conquered for the Lord. And according to verse 14, this uh, uh, Hebron or Kiriath Arba was full of giants. And there was a family of giants there who were relatives later on of Goliath. There were three of them in the family in verse 14 of Joshua 15, uh, Shesai, and then uh, uh, a Haiman, and then Talmai. These were the, the names of the giants. These were names. I don't think you like to name your son these names. But they were enemies of the Lord that Joshua that Caleb conquered. And then Caleb has a, ne a, nephew, a nephew by the name of uh, uh, a nephew by the name of Othiniel. And uh, Caleb said, I have a beautiful daughter. Anybody who leads and conquers the land of the giants of Hebron, I will give you for, my, for your wife, my daughter, here, my Aksa. What a beautiful woman must have been Aksa. Like some of our women here, very beautiful. So, uh, Othniel said, Kung kinsa ang mga daog, sining mga giants sa Hebron, ihatag ko ang asawa, si Aksa nga anak ko. Grabe na, wala na panguyab. Ditso na lang kasal. Di ka na maguyab-uyab, di ka na magsulat sa love letter, di ka na maghatag gift. Di ka na maghatag Christmas gift. Di ka na maghatag birthday gift. Ditsu na. Ang unsa lang himuan mo. Away. <laughs> Grabe nga. Ha? Klase sang, ano, sang courtship. We don't have that kind of courtship today. But it was so, you know, 4,000 years ago. Mauna ang ilang uh, courtship. Kinsa ang isganan nga sundalo, makalaog sa kaaway. Iyan ni ang prinsesa. Will I buy it free right away? Your reward. Anyway, you married with people. The most beautiful girl that the Lord gave you. And you, young people, are you looking for that beautiful girl? Ang imong aksa? A beautiful girl? On one condition, the Lord will give that person faithful, said God. Now, later on, Skidding Sin Othniel was able to conquer you know, Hebron, the mountain of Hebron. And later on, the book of, uh, of uh, 
judges, he became one of the judges of Israel, Othniel, a very beautiful name. So that it is, that is it, a beautiful story about the conquering spiritual giants. So for you and me today, this is the middle of the year, 2022. Are you facing your own giants today? So what are you doing? So we present our lives today in order to face spiritual giants. So the application is found in Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2, very familiar passage, diva. We could memorize it. Could we? We can quote it together. Those who memorize it, you quote it with me. Ready? Begin. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And do not conform to this world, but be transformed with the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Present your life today to face your own giant of that 21st century. Whatever that giant may be, we have to present our bodies fully and sincerely to the Lord. So, how do we face the giants? 1 Corinthians chapter 13, at the last part here, Paul is talking about the best way, the best armor against the giants. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 13, now abides faith, hope, and love, but the greatest of this is love. So how to face the giants? of the 21st century. I would like to rearrange that a little bit. You know, I start instead of faith, hope, love, I will start with faith. Faith in accepting Jesus Christ as our personal Savior. And then love, that means after you have faith in Jesus, you love with all your heart, your enemy, your loved ones, your difficulty, your church, your neighbor, someone you don't like, you love them, and the number three is, of course, the topic for this year, hope. So use your hope to fight whatever are the giants that the Lord is giving you, just like uh, Caleb and Joshua, who faced their, or, their own giants 4,000 years ago. Are you doing well in your fight against spiritual giants in your life? And are you willing to surrender to the Lord so that he will give you the victory against the spiritual giants of your life. So as I told you yesterday, we came from Iloilo to attend the funeral of Mrs. Sophie Ginesta. Do you know how old she was? She was 99 years old. So this year, by December, she would have been 100. Imagine, no? 100 almost 100, just a few, just several more months and she will be 100 all the while serving the Lord. So in those 99 years, how many years ang iya pag Siguro mga, mga 75 years at least because she served the Lord, you know. I married Mr. Ginesta when she was about 25 or so and they went to be missionaries and they went to the Philippines. Uh, there was a time they went first to I think to China, and then uh, partly Japan, and then to the Philippines, in Metro Manila, and then, of course, she stayed a long time in Iloilo, in Panay Island. And uh, after that, uh, they went also to New Guinea, where Mr. Ginesta died, and then she walked back to the Philippines as a single widowed missionary, and we met her way back in uh, the 90s, when we were teaching, Mrs. Ray and I were teaching in the Bible school, Dawn Baptist Bible Institute in Iloilo City. And she was also a faculty member there. And we became friends. She became our spiritual mother. And she uh, was so concerned for us. She was so concerned with our uh, children during the time. We only had lesser some. And then later on, when we resided in Dawn, 
because I got sick. We went to Pontevedra to become the pastor there. So our other children were born there. So she also visited us, conducting, you know, in our church, uh, basic youth conflict lectures on how to conquer uh, the, the sin in our lives and how to be victorious Christians and how to master the art of victorious Christian living, which every Christian should. And then later on, we went to Cebu. She would also visit us two or three times a year in Cebu, conducting again lectures in how to have victorious Christian life. So all the time we were in Cebu City, Grace Baptist Church of Cebu, she was our spiritual mother. And then finally, we resigned in Cebu and we went here in Mandawi to start another work here. So she was already, you know, uh, at the end of her 80s, beginning of her 90s during that time. And she, I think she came to Cebu one more time when she was 99 years old to visit us in Mandawi and gave us some lecture during the time. But was, that was the last because she was already very physically weak, and uh, yet she continued to serve. And she served in the correctional in Munting Lupa, teaching the, the ladies, the women there who were imprisoned in, in Munting Lupa. For until, until the rest of her 90s. And of course, during the pandemic, she stopped doing there. It's already very dangerous. And during the pandemic, well, let's say exercise, so most of the time, sabalay na lang siya, and then uh, tulog na lang siya, and then mata siya. We also visited her during the pandemic two years ago. One more time, we met her, had uh, lunch with her. So it was wonderful. And then, uh, of course, uh, last week, she went home to be with the Lord. And she was 99 years old. Imagine that 99 years old, a servant of the Lord, serving this more than 65 years. No retirement until the grave. So uh, we had a wonderful uh, evening service to honor her last Friday evening. And many pastors, many friends, Mrs. Roy also, I also, we gave testimony about uh, her life and the way she served the Lord. So what did Mrs. Dinesta do, and Sophie do? She was conquering spiritual giants with hope and faith that the serving the Lord must continue to the very end. And that is a reminder for all of us this month of June as we uh, have our theme for this month, hope, hopeful service. So what are your giants today that discourage you? you as a couple, husband and wife, what are your co giants that discourage you? Maybe as a, a daughter, a son. What are your giants that discover you, that di discourage you? Maybe as a professional, as a businessman, or as a student, or as a child of your parents. So what giants are you facing? Are they fearful giants, terrible giants that you cannot beat because they are too, too big for you? Remember, we conquer spiritual giants with faith and love and hope. And right now, during this time of pandemic, the greatest thing that we can use against the spiritual enemies of our lives is hope. Don't stop hoping. Don't stop uh, trusting the Lord. Don't stop planning. Don't stop giving your ambition. So continue with your, your hope, with your plan, whether it will be going abroad or getting married or finishing your course or graduating or transferring in another job or continuing with your job. Never stop with the hope of fulfilling God's will for your life. And when you do that, the Lord will be with you. So facing spiritual giants with hope.
are you doing it? Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, thank you for your word and the challenge it gives us. Fill us with the hope of Jesus Christ in these last days so that we will be able to fight whatever difficulties and spiritual giants the enemy is throwing against us. And by your power alone, with our faith and love and hope, we will conquer them. In Jesus' name, amen.